Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to get my name off the screen and introduce you to our team at the Diagnostics Discovery Laboratory at the University of Nevada School of Medicine. So Dr. Tom Kozell and I founded this laboratory with the goal of trying to develop rapid, accurate, and inexpensive diagnostic tests for resource-poor settings. And so how do we do this? We take a very simple test, the home pregnancy test, right? It's very easy to use. It's very simple. We all know how accurate it is as well. Um, what we want to do is use that test to, to diagnose infectious diseases around the world. And so, actually, the first story starts here. I recently took a trip to Thailand. As you may have guessed, this is a, um, a rice paddy. And as you can see, it's, it's beautiful. If you've ever been to a rice paddy, the smells, the colors, it's just absolutely wonderful. But this is actually what goes into making a rice paddy. Okay, you see a farmer here. He's got a couple of water buffalo. He's plowing the field, completely getting it ready for, for planting of the new, the new rice. But you know what? This is a way of life all through Southeast Asia and in and many, and many parts of, of the world. So millions of people count on these rice paddies for, for obviously food and money and clothing and, and shelter. So imagine, if you will, the life of a rice farmer in northeast Thailand where I visited. Maybe this fellow here. One day he wakes up and he has a fever. He has a cough. He's, he's pretty sick. What does he do? Well, he go, actually, he goes back to work because, you know, these, the rice field is his, his main way of life, and that's how he makes his money for his family. But he just keeps on getting sicker and sicker. So eventually, he makes his way to a regional clinic and maybe gets some antibiotics if he's lucky, maybe seen by a nurse, but he's sent home. The antibiotics are not working. He's just getting sicker and sicker. You know, at this point, if he lived in the United States, he may have, have, have access to a machine like this. This is a $500,000 machine. It's basically a pathogen detector. It can detect viruses, bacteria, fungus, whatever. It, in, for example, it can detect 400 different kinds of bacteria and actually tell you what the bacteria is resistant to as far as antibiotics. So you know what the patient is infected with and you know what to treat the patient with. But back to the resource-poor setting. So this rice farmer does not have access to, to high-tech, state-of-the-art equipment like this. So what does he do? Eventually, he takes a day-long trip to this regional hospital. I actually visited this hospital in northeast Thailand. It's, a, it's a, just a very busy place. The, the rice farmer, he's admitted to the hospital. Blood is taken. So they want to figure out what's in his blood. Is it a, is it a fungus? Is it a virus, a bacteria? But unfortunately, it takes seven days to figure out he's infected with a bacteria. Seven days. So this is, this is way too long. And unfortunately, that rice farmer died two days after being admitted to the hospital. So what actually was this, was this rice farmer infected with? Well, it turns out it was this. It's a, it's a bacteria called Burkholderia pseudomallei. And I know it's a mouthful, but it causes a, a deadly disease called meliodosis. And you've probably never heard of it. That's a good thing. It, it's not common in the United States. However, it is common in these darker regions here, all over Southeast Asia. It's actually estimated to cause 400,000 cases per year and 250,000 deaths per year. And so that's 150,000 cases in India and 40,000 in Bangladesh. And so the, re the region that I visited in Northeast Thailand, it's a hot spot. It has a 43% mortality rate. So 43% of the people who are infected actually die. So this is a tremendous problem that Obviously, not too many people know about. Now, how do these people become infected? That's the big question. Well, it turns out the bacteria actually loves these rice paddies. We're back to the rice paddies. It actually can grow in the soil and grow in the mud. And so a handful of this mud from some of these rice paddies can, can contain 100,000 bacteria. And so how do we know that? We can take a small amount of this bacteria and put it on a plate, a Petri dish in the laboratory, and actually grow this bacteria. And these are little colonies of Burke growing on, growing on a plate. So, so what can we do here in Nevada? Well, first we had to recognize the problem. The problem was it took seven days to diagnose this infection, and that is far too long. And so what we wanted to do is try to, try to build a, a rapid test, 
an accurate test that could diagnose this infection within, within minutes. So the home pregnancy test was the best thing we could think of here. And shown here, you put a sample on the sample pad. It could be blood, it could be urine, and the test is off and running. It's flowing, just like a home pregnancy test. The test on the top is actually negative. It only has one line. The test on the bottom, there's two lines. So that patient would be positive. Now this is, this is fast forward here, but this is 10 minutes as opposed to seven days. So we really feel like this could save some lives. And you may ask, this is, this is a pretty simple technology, but you may ask, why, why isn't this used already in these resource-poor settings? Well, this is not a moneymaker, unfortunately. So it's really hard to convince a biotech company to actually make a product like this. It probably would sell for about $1 in India, in, in, in Africa, or Cambodia. And so, Hard, to, hard for a company to actually invest in something like this, but we did manage to find a company that was willing to manufacture it for us. And so now it's being, it, now it's being evaluated in, in India, in Nepal, in Thailand, kind of all over the globe. So hopefully saving lives. So I want to I tell a little story about actually how we developed this test, because this is kind of the harder part. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what does the bacteria actually make during the infection that's shed into the patient? So what can we detect in the patient? This is actually a picture of a bacteria taken with the microscope. This region here actually is like the hair on the outside of a bacteria. It's actually released during an infection. So we can try to detect it. Now how do we detect it? Well, we make antibodies. And these antibodies are no different than the antibodies that we make when we're infected with a bacteria or a virus. So we can make a, an antibody that's specific to that bacterial target. And if we have that, we can make our test. So here's our test. Here's that drop of blood. Hopefully it contains our bacterial antigen. You put the sample down on the sample pad and it starts flowing. It flows down to this region and it interacts with that antibody we made in the lab. But it actually contains a little gold bead stuck on that antibody. And now that complex keeps on flowing down until it reaches another antibody where it gets stuck. And so all those tiny little gold beads line up and make two lines on the test. And that's a positive test. That's exactly how home pregnancy tests work, and that's exactly how this test works. So very simple technology used in a resource-poor setting. So now that you know what we do, you know how we make these tests. Let me tell you one more story about a, 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 a very pathogenic um, microbe that we're working on. So, Africa. There are 22 million HIV-positive patients in Africa, and that's opposed to about 1.5 million in the United States. And so imagine if a person, an uh, HIV-positive patient, wakes up one day with a headache, a fever, and neck pain. Now, the one thing about HIV patients, their immune system is weakened. So they're susceptible to microbial infections that normally would not cause disease. So that patient wakes up with neck pain and a fever. Those symptoms are strongly suggestive of an infection in the brain. And if it's a, if it's a, a patient with HIV, they most likely have this, which is called cryptococcal meningitis. It's, a, it's caused by a pathogenic yeast. And there are a million cases per year globally and 600,000 deaths. And you can see how bad it is in sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. So what if there was a test that could rapidly identify that pathogen even before a patient got sick? That would be fantastic. It would save lives. And that's exactly what Tom Kozell did. We worked together in the laboratory at, at, at UNR. And so he developed a test, actually, that can detect that pathogenic yeast within 10, seconds from a drop of uh, 10 minutes from a drop of blood, this rapid home pregnancy-like test. And so if that test is positive, critical antifungal medication is provided free of charge to these patients. So it's really keeping families together. That's a, that, and the CDC is absolutely in love with this test. They want it to be used in at least half of the HIV clinics in Africa and Asia, and they think it will save 100,000 lives. And to me, that's 100,000 families that stay together. So with that, I'd like to thank you, and, and if anybody would ever like to visit our laboratory, I'd be happy to show you around. Thank you.